today's message is already in progress. While you're standing, I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the gospel that has been recorded by John. The gospel that has been recorded by John, chapter number 8. John chapter number 8. And I want to begin reading at verse number 1. And it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted this familiar context of Scripture beginning with verse number 1. John chapter 8. Verse number 1. Your Bible should read, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they say, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he did not hear them. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those your accusers? Has no man condemned you? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I want to tag this text, I'm catching a case of grace. You may be seated in the Lord's church. In the 19th century, there was a well-known artist by the name of Sir Edward C. Burns Jones. Sir Edward C. Burns Jones told of a time when he was invited for tea at his daughter's home. During that time when he got to his daughter's home, they began to talk and enjoy good family time. And his daughter permitted his granddaughter to join him for dinner at the table. During her time of interacting with her grandfather, she was misbehaving. And the daughter decided to punish the granddaughter. Her punishment was to make her daughter go stand in the corner and face the wall. The grandfather did not interrupt his daughter's decision of discipline for his granddaughter. Shortly after that, while his granddaughter is standing facing against the wall, he decided to leave. The next morning, Sir Edward C. Burns Jones showed up back at his daughter's house with paint and palette in hand. He is a master artist. She let her father in and said, take me to that wall where you made my granddaughter stand. He went to that wall and started painting pictures on that wall and told his daughter, the next time you make my granddaughter stand against this wall, at least she'll have something beautiful to look at. 
oftentimes, brothers and sisters, your father does not interrupt your punishment. He just goes to the place where you've been punished and turn beauty into a place of punishment. It is the scene, ladies and gentlemen, that when we as God's children mess up, we do not fall from grace. We fall into grace. And I know that I'm not the only one in this room that can testify that God may not have stopped your punishment, but he at least stepped into your punishment and allowed you to see some beauty in a bad situation. Ladies and gentlemen, might I report today that this account in John's gospel, only documented in John's gospel, was a picture of an artist showing up in a bad situation to put some art on an ugly canvas. This event is on the heels of Jesus doing what he does best and that is be a voice of controversy in the time in which he served in his community. He shows up and his most controversial claim is John's entire thesis for his whole book. John says that Jesus wasn't just the son of God, that Jesus wasn't just the son of man, that Jesus wasn't just a social activist or a prophet, but John says that Jesus was God. He opens up this book with his thesis, the word was God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. He is saying Jesus was both the son of God and God the son. He's being very clear, very definitive, and very resolved, and very resolute that my whole book includes events in the life of Jesus not captured by those other three synoptic writers, moments that speak to his deity. And one of the subcurrents of John's book is that he records those times in this segment of his book where Jesus honors and visits and pays homage and participates in the Jewish festivals only to show up to tell the people that he is the fulfillment of all of their festivals. <laughs> uh, he, he shows up very, very resolute. To say that all that you have been doing all this long time, I am the full manifestation of all you've been doing all these years. It, it got so bad that it calls grounds for the Jewish authorities, the Sanhedrin Council, to launch a conspiracy and a hit out on Jesus Christ. John chapter 5 verse 16 after Jesus attends the feast there of Sabbath he empowered a man who had not walked in 38 years chilling at the pool of Bethesda he empowered him to get up and walk and John 5 and 16 says from that moment they persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him John chapter 6 is the feast of Passover and Jesus shows up to say he is bread. John chapter 7 is the feast of tabernacles and Jesus shows up to say that he is water and light. John chapter 8, he is now leaving the feast of tabernacles and this story is inserted as he leaves the Feast of Tabernacles, that he goes back to church early one morning. I'm in verse number one. 
He goes back to church early in the morning and convenes Bible study. Text says he taught in the temple and people came to hear him. And while he's teaching, the scribes and the Pharisees bring a woman caught in the act of adultery and ask Jesus, Jesus the law says that we should stone her, but what do you say? Jesus does something that most of us don't believe is in his character to do. He ignores them. I didn't make that up, it's in text. Text says he ignored them so much they kept asking him, what do you think we should do? Jesus ignored them. Stooped down on the ground and started writing something that none of us know what he wrote. Scholars don't know because scripture doesn't tell us there is no insight on what he wrote. So if anybody says what Jesus wrote, they're lying. There are some things in the Bible that are not known to humanity. They're only known to God. He stoops down and wrote something and asks one question. You who are without sin cast first stone. Went back to writing, and while he wrote, the accusers started dismissing themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, be very clear. They did not dismiss themselves on what Jesus wrote. They dismissed themselves on what Jesus said. And Jesus looks back up and sees the woman, and her accusers are gone. He sees them gone and still asks her, where are your accusers? She said, they're all gone. Nobody here but me and you. And Jesus says, lady, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Can I just sum this story up for you? John chapter 8 verses 1 through 11 is the best case of grace on the worst person. It is a case where grace is at its best demonstration on the one person who is undeserving of this matter. May we revisit again, ladies and gentlemen, just when you think you've fallen from grace, you fall into grace. That's the story. May we revisit again the particulars of this matter that will help us improve our walk with God. It is clear, ladies and gentlemen, that there is something fishy going on here. Because when we read this story, we must read this story understanding that the woman caught in the act of adultery is not the focal person of the story. This story is not about her. Because verse 5, 6, and or 7 says, they brought her to Jesus that they might accuse him. I'm going to try it one more time because you didn't hear me. She is not the focal person of the story. She is a means to an end. She, she is a pawn in a larger game. She, this is not about her at all. They brought her to Jesus that they might accuse Jesus and have reason to attack him because they've been trying to silence him 
for four chapters. And it hasn't worked yet. They're mad at him because he healed that man at the pool of Bethesda and he healed him on the Sabbath day. And they count that as work. So they say that Jesus broke the law because he did a work on the Sabbath day. That didn't work. He takes two fish and five loaves of bread, feeds 5,000 people, not counting the women and children in John chapter 6. That didn't work. John chapter 7, he shows up at the Feast of Tabernacles and says that he is the water of life and he is the light of the world. That didn't work. And it got so bad that in John chapter 7, verse 32, they sent officers to arrest Jesus. And in John chapter 7, verse 45, the officers came back to the Pharisees and scribes and they said, man, where's Jesus? The officers said, never a man spoke like this. I'm going to try it again. You didn't hear me. They went to go arrest the word and got arrested by the word. Uh, has that ever happened to you? Somebody thought that they was coming to do you some harm, thought that they had some grounds not to like you until they had an encounter with you and found out you ain't that bad. Has that ever happened to you? Where somebody sent, somebody poisoned you with their dislike for somebody else and when you encountered that person, you found out they're really not that bad of a person. They wanted you to not like them and you end up loving the person they don't like. It's not happened sometime at church. You walk through God's house feeling one way, but when the word of God was declared and preached over your life, you left out arrested by the very word you said you didn't feel like hearing the very time you don't feel like going to church that's the time God would do something special when you show up to the world as a matter of fact the reason why you ain't happy right now is because God kept you from some attacks you don't even know about the old saints put it this way he kept me from danger seen and unseen see you shouting about the stuff you know about but the God I serve has stopped the devil on plenty of times that you never even knew about they went to go arrest the word and got arrested by the word. They said never a man spoke like this. We had our guns ready. Had our swords and shields ready. But we showed up to church and he started talking. I don't know what he was saying. I don't know what he was saying. He might have been saying the Lord is my light my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my enemies come upon me eat of my flesh they stumble and fail though a host should encamp round about me this one thing will I do I'm a dwell in the house of the Lord I don't, I don't know what he said. He might have said, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I don't know what he said. But whatever he said, they got arrested. Trying to arrest him and got arrested. And it got so bad. The Pharisees and the scribes said, man, that's okay. We'll go handle it ourselves. We sent you to go arrest him. You came back with nothing. We'll go do this ourselves. I 
and they went and grabbed an adulterous woman. to try to trap Jesus because they know that Jesus has a sensitivity for sinners. I can't stand fake church folk. See, some of y'all been saved too long because so you got amnesia. So you trying to sit in this church and act like God ain't saved you from something that you don't want to talk about in the Lord's house. But for all the rest of us saved, sanctified, and real people, when somebody say he saved me from something, your mind ought to go back to what he brought you out of because you know you were stuck in something that couldn't nobody get you out of but the Lord Jesus. Thank God. This ain't going to come out right. They know that Jesus has a weakness for sinners. So they're trying to use his ministry against him. Lord have mercy today. So they go bring an adulterous woman to him. Since y'all couldn't go arrest him, we gonna go trap him. And they went and brought an adulterous woman to him. And they say to him, hey Jesus, Moses told us in the law, listen to their language, that such should be stoned. Such should be stoned. Translated, a woman like her should be stoned. But what do you say? But what do you say? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not that smart. So I just need y'all to indulge with me and help me look intelligent. <laughs> Y'all with me? The text says in verse 1 that Jesus went to church early in the morning. Okay, let me talk to these people here. If it's already morning, what's the point of it saying it's early? He didn't just go in the morning. He went early in the morning to church. They showed up with an adulterous woman early in the morning. Now I'm slow so y'all got to help me. How did you get your hands on an adulterous woman? Early in the morning. Just asking y'all a question. It's early in the morning. And we at church. And you bring an adulterous woman, not at the second service, at the early morning service. This 
is some kind of Shirley Murdoch ministry. See, y'all acting funny, so let me talk to the real people who got that as we lay anointing. Don't y'all play me like you've been saved all your life. Because that's the only way you got hold to an adulterous woman early. It's too early for this. Unless, my bad, I'm sorry. I won't tell on all y'all. I'm just trying to suggest it's too early in the morning. Where she come from? Don't look at your neighbor. Everybody look this way. Don't do that. Look this way. Where she come from? Early. In the morning. We at church. That's my first question. Y'all gotta make me look intelligent. That's all I'm asking you to do today. I need y'all to cooperate with your boy. more question. I need y'all to help me look intelligent now. If you caught this woman in the very act, why is she the only one present? You didn't see her other partner? Because the truth of the matter is, church, you can't do adultery by yourself. Touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor that math don't add up. about what the law said. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10 says, the man who commits adultery with the woman of another husband is the adulterer and the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. Deuteronomy 22 and 22 says the man that is found in adultery with another man's wife 
both he and the woman must be put to death. We got the woman. But where is the man? And once again, we are using religion to justify discrimination. Once again, we are using the law to justify our own means. Some of y'all may not remember this, but in my time of matriculating in church, the old saints, when a girl got pregnant out of wedlock, they'd bring her before the whole church. But I ain't never seen them bring the man. You know, like she got pregnant by herself, you know. I ain't never seen them bring the man. And you want her to apologize for doing something she did at the house. This one done at the church. Y'all got to be careful because at times it's the church that struggles with grace. See, we preach it, but we don't practice it until you the one needed. Now you want everybody to be gracious to you, but when somebody else has messed up, you want the law to fall on them. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I need grace just like everybody else. <laughs> so you have, you have lied about the law. You have fixed this for your own convenience. And watch the enemy. The beauty of this whole thing, y'all, I'm going to do the best I can not to run around this church when I say this. The best thing that ever happened in this whole text is that God used her enemies to bring her to Jesus. Because the weapon that you formed against me didn't prosper. And when you thought you were trying to trap me, you only set me up to be free from you. And they brought her to Jesus. Can I tell you, God got so much power He'll use folk who can't stand you to change your whole life and get you closer to Jesus. He'll make your enemies your footstool and the very people who are trying to kill you, God will turn around and use them to give you life. The enemies brought him to Jesus. And Jesus, look what they did, y'all. They brought her to church and attempted to make a spectacle of her at church. Jesus is at church. They bring her to church to turn the church in the court so they can raise judgment against the judge. I got it in my mind. I said they brought her to church to turn the church into a court only so that they can raise judgment against the judge. And while they were calling for a judge, he became a lawyer. Man, I wish I had somebody in here who remotely liked the Bible a little bit. Anybody here know when God gets on your case, 
they were getting ready to sentence you, but God will turn it around and give you life. You want me to be a judge? I'm going to be a lawyer. And the only thing I'm going to say, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Okay, chat, I'm going to try it one more time. He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Still missed it. He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Still slow. He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Okay, I ain't got time for y'all. Y'all acting funny. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus made that statement, he was not talking about the men he was talking to. He was talking about himself because he's the only one among them that's without sin. And if I ain't throwing stones on her, I've disqualified you from throwing stones on her because you got sin in you, but I don't have sin in me. And if I ain't stoning her, you ain't either. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you can't stone me because Jesus ain't stoning me. He the only one without sin and therefore if he ain't throwing a stone, you are disqualified. Man, I'm in the Bible. He that is without sin the only he that's without sin in this whole group is me. And if I ain't throwing no stone, that disqualifies you. Lady and spies, I'm going to try to be cool when I say this. It's purple sweet today, so I'm trying to keep it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. And their response to what Jesus said means that they not only heard him, they interpreted him. Because if they would have stayed, they wouldn't have felt guilty. But the fact that they walked off when Jesus didn't even say walk off. Jesus said, if you qualify to throw a stone, you got to be me. They walked off, which means they interpreted what he said. His one statement revealed that she is not the only one here that deserves the punishment if there's going to be any. Y'all missed the text. I'm just giving scattered remarks, read. That's all I'm doing. The text says, and when they were convicted in their conscience, they walked away. Lean in, child of God. Conscience. Con science. Con meaning with science meaning knowledge. And when they were convicted in their co knowledge of her sin. Y'all missed it. See, ladies and gentlemen, whenever your conscience convicts you, it is because you are familiar on the inside of what somebody's talking about on the outside. Y'all still slow. The Lord didn't convict her. Their conscience did because it's possible you are involved in her sin. 
And if you ain't involved in her sin, you have some familiarity with her sin. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to watch people in this next season of your life who want to highlight your sin so they can hide theirs. Preach Pastor Morgan. You got to watch people who want to shine dirt on you in an attempt to hide their own dirt when they're doing the exact same thing. Because if your conscience identified, it means you're familiar with it yourself. And they walked away. One by one. They kept walking away. From the oldest to the last. They walked away. They were trying to trap Jesus because if Jesus would have said stoner, then he would have had some kind of claim against him being the savior. If he would have said don't stoner, then he wouldn't have been honoring the law. So in the genius of Jesus, Jesus takes their own and turns it against them. Y'all missed it. And the folk who set up the trap got trapped. Is Tolan Morgan preaching in here or what? You better be careful when you're trying to take somebody else out because the very trap you set for somebody else can be the trap to take you out. Why are you trying to convict somebody else? You're going to end up getting convicted. The trap they laid for Jesus, they got caught in it themselves. Y'all don't believe that'll happen, don't you? I got witnesses. I got witnesses. They called me. They couldn't be here today, but they called me. It was the three Hebrew boys. They couldn't make church today, but they called me. So I know what that feels like. Cause I had some men to throw me in a fiery furnace. And when we got through in, we didn't get burned, but the fire burned the people who threw us in. You got to be careful church. When you call yourself trying to take somebody else out, you gonna get taken out. Do you know I ain't got time to be trying to take somebody else out? I got too much life to live. I got too much business to take care of. I got too much family to take care of. I got money to make. I wish I had some help in here. I got a God to glorify. I got business on my mind. I got vision on my mind. I gotta go have some fun. I ain't got time to stop my life to try to kill yours. As a matter of fact, would you go touch three people and tell them, get a life. You ain't got time to be seeing what folk post. Get a life. You ain't got time to be staying in other folks' business. Get a life. I feel pretty good. This year. When you got a life, you don't have time. To try to hurt somebody else. I quit. Elder Whitaker already laughed at me when I said that. Because he know I'm lying. I'll, say, I'll, I'll just say I'll attempt to quit. This it. Best thing you ever did is bring me to Jesus. Because when, that, when you brought me to Jesus, 
he released me. Listen to what Jesus said. Watch it loud and listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, lady, where are your accusers after they had already left? I'm going to try it again. You, you missed it. They already left. Jesus said, now where are your accusers? Hey, Jesus, duh, they gone. I knew that but I asked you cause on cause I'm waiting on you to recognize that your life is now empty of people who believe you don't deserve a future because they're familiar with your past you miss it so I'll try it again she was caught in the act of adultery and they want to stone her because they're familiar with her past. And I want to argue they really want to stone her because they're trying to get rid of evidence. Y'all going to get that on Thursday. They're really trying to stone her because they're trying to get rid of evidence. And Jesus asked her, I need you to acknowledge that I'm getting ready to start your life all over again by emptying it. Because there's nobody here but me and you. Church, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but when you leave church today, you need to take an evaluation of your life. And if it ain't nobody but you and Jesus, he getting ready to start your life all over again. Because he's emptied your life of people who believe you don't deserve a future because they know your past. Before there can be elevation, there has to be elimination. And I'm empty in your life of people who think you don't deserve a future. Just because they're familiar with your past. I'm releasing you. I don't know whose word that is, but the Lord says I'm releasing you. I'm releasing you. Not only am I releasing you, I'm rescuing you. Hey, hey Reigns, watch this. Oh, my soul getting happy. Oh. I'm releasing you. This is one of those stories, church, that doesn't end when it ends. It ends in verse 11, but doesn't stop until the last verse of chapter 8. Y'all missed it. The rest of chapter 8, y'all, Jesus is in the temple teaching, and he's teaching stuff that is aggravating the scribes and Pharisees. They finally get mad at Jesus because Jesus says in verse 58 of chapter 8, before Abraham was, I am. And the very last verse of chapter 8 says, and they picked up stones and threw them at Jesus. Still missed it. Jesus is teaching in the whole chapter. Verse 58, he says, before Abraham was, I am. The last verse of the chapter says, and they picked up stones and threw them at Jesus. Since y'all acting funny. They were supposed to stone the woman. But by the time the chapter ended, Jesus took the punishment that she was supposed to get because he was wounded for my transgression, bruised 
for my iniquities. You living because he took your punishment. The stones she was supposed to get, Jesus got. The cross you were supposed to be on, and I was supposed to be on, Jesus got it. They didn't stone her because they end up stoning him. She got rescued from stones. She got released from her accusers. But finally, y'all, ain't nobody happy off this point. He released her. He rescued her. And he restricted her. He said, hey, lady, go and sin no more. Grace is not a license for you to do whatever you want to do just because you've been rescued and released. Grace is the power to not walk in the sin he's delivered you from. Sin no more translates live holy. Sin no more. See, you ain't saying nothing now. Sin no more translates, don't do it again. Sin no more translates, live right. Because I didn't just give you life, I got to give you some restrictions so you can stay alive. I didn't set you free so you can do what you want to do. I didn't set you free so you can live any kind of way. I didn't set you free so you could come up in the Lord's house any kind of way. I didn't set you free so you can walk around like you got a license to live in sin just because grace is on your life. Jesus says, since I've set you free, now walk in that freedom and don't do it again. Because when I restrict you, I'm still working to keep you alive. That's why your children get mad at you because they don't understand when you restrict them, you're trying to keep them alive. I can't get no help around here. All right, let me put you this way and I'm done. If you're going to take a trip to the depths of the sea, I think the deepest sea point is seven miles down. You can't go down there on your own. <laughs> Cause you ain't gonna make it back you got to get in this small little capsule that's pressurized to try to go as deep as you can nobody's been down seven miles but they're estimated it's about seven miles down you get down there get scared guess what can't get out cause if you get out you're going to die. So either get out because of fear or accept the restriction. Because the restriction is working to keep you alive. Have I got any help here? God wants you to live holy because he still wants you to be able to live because the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. The less sin you do, the better life you going to live. Tell somebody accept the restrictions and live holy. Okay, James Spies, for real, this is my third time saying I'm done. I promise I'm done. For real, this it. This it. I'm not for real. This it. Jesus did something that was major. This it. This, this it. For real. Antoine, the Bible says he, 
he stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground. I'm done. That's it. Stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground. We don't know what he wrote. We know he was writing in the process of ignoring Pharisees and scribes. We don't know what he wrote. But Texas Pacific, he took his finger, wrote on the ground. Hey, Strong, if he took his finger, Oscar, and wrote on the ground, he wrote on something that could be washed away. He's, if he wrote on the ground, he wrote on something that can be wiped away. Y'all missed it. That same finger is the same finger that wrote the Ten Commandments that said do not commit adultery and that was written on stone but in John chapter 8 the same finger that wrote on stone is now writing on dirt cause I know you was gonna mess up anyway so now I'm gonna write it on dirt and wash it away so let me ask you a question what can wash Mm, away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood tell somebody he's changed what he wrote on so he could wash my sins away it was once on stone but now it's on dirt and he can wash it away That's how you call the case of grace. Because what was once stuck on stone is now washed away, wiped away. And God's word to you is after the day, you can no longer walk with people who want to keep you hostage to your past. Because if Jesus washed it away, I'm not going to let you keep bringing it up what he's washed away. Would you encourage one person and tell them, neighbor, whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. And after today, I'm walking in my freedom. Do I got anybody in this place that knows how to make the sound of freedom? If you've been set free, open your mouth. Free! Say it! Yeah! 
Listen to me, church. Everyone standing. Listen to this. Just think about this with me for one second. If God killed you every time or killed us every time we mess up, we never live right. Because we wouldn't be alive to even have a chance to live right. So when I wrote on the ground, I'm giving you a signal that I'm giving you another chance. Because I care more about your life than I do your death. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for watching the Encouraging Word broadcast with Pastor Tolan Morgan. Fellowship Bible Baptist Church is located at 450 Dunbar Road in Warner Robins, Georgia. We invite you to join us at one or any of our worship experiences. If you would like more information about our church, visit our website at fbbchome.org.